Hello everyone, my name is Abayomi. You are welcome to the part 4 of building production grade REST API. In this final series, we will deploy our app to Heroku using Bash script. We will upload our files. We will use a meter for a fire and forget by sending the email and also configure our node mailer. Then we will encrypt our password while we are creating a new user. Also, we perform validation and also create a token which we hold our user payload. So let's get right into it. To deploy our existing hub to Heroku, I'll create a new file called deploy.sh. Then I'll type this hash bang bin bash. So this is the share I want to use. I want to use the bash. And I will check if the first argument is empty. So our first argument should be, excuse me, dollar one. Then close this guy. Then you can echo error commit message not provided. So we we'll make our commit message dynamic. Then we can exit one. Then we can close this condition by typing F I. So as this one means one means error, y zero means uh, a successful execution. Then I'll go to my package.json to write a script for it. I'll call it deploy. Deploy using bash then deploy. Like so. But before then let's make a uh, deploy.sh executable by typing search mod mod then executable then we call it deploy.sh then if you type lsa or let's do ll you will see your deploy.sh so you have the read and write now so I'll close this terminal then I have this project deployed on GitHub already here, so you need to deploy it on GitHub. Then let's log into our Heroku by typing Heroku login. So I'll press any key, I'll press H, then it will open in my browser now. Then I can log in here. So if I go back to my terminal, we have logged in as a biomegnosy. Cool. Then I'll go to the Heroku dashboard. I'll create a new project. Create a new app. Then I'll call it production or product grade. Like so. I'll create this app. So the so the app name is available. Then I'll create this. Then if you scroll down, then you can add this. So we need this git remote add. So I'll copy this remote, then I'll paste it here. Like so. So before running this git add or git commit and git push recommend, let's see if we have a, I'll go to my pack.json and I'll write my build. So I'll do um, build, build should be TSC, at least TypeScript build. So if you go to your TS config, you see that we have this at the iPhone dist. So you create a dist. Yeah, we're building it there. So what else do we need? I think that is all. So we have this the sort of TS. It should be dot JS. So let's run npm run build first. npm run build. So we have the JavaScript equivalent of what we have here. So dot js. So if I do node node this dot server dot js should have servers running on ports at the yard and development server like so. So I'll close this and 
then let's check if this is a git project by running git remote hyphen v so we have this rest API production grid like so so this is the Heroku remote link and this is for the git so to deploy we just run this script here npm run deploy so npm run deploy then we need we need a message if you notice we have this variable here so uh pushing to Heroku like so then it will run this so let's check this first to see if it's working or not so we have error commit message because you need to pass a commit message it means this 94 is working so let's continue so i've had git add or git commit if m then we we'll put the message there put in quotes dollar one like so so this is the message that we will pass here there we can do git push origin so if you're working on different branches like main and master you can put your variable two as as dollar two but i'll just put main here then i can do iroko git push iroko main then i can also restart iroko like iroko restart and if you want to go for i can do iroko open like so so this will push to github and this will push to github this will push to iroko let's give it push code to iroko add and push to github like so then we start the server so if i do npm run deploy and i'll give it a message pushing to Heroku. let's see what will happen so if you first push to Heroku, then after pushing it's pushing to no if you first push to github then after pushing to github push to Heroku. then if we have a successful build what will happen it will restart the server and open it myself so we have the restarting dinos here then open myself then we have server is up so this is how you can use a script to deploy to Heroku and restart the server at the same time now let's register a new user i'll come back to my vs code and i'll close this close this close this so let's create a new folder called users or let's call it auth so everything regarding auth will be placed here like the service controller routes and whatnot so let's create a new file Call it auth.service service.ts. Create another one auth.controller.ts auth.routes.ts. So let's start with the auth service. Do auth service. Create a class for it. Then we open this up. Then we can do public static and a sync function then create user then we call this data and call it an interface of a user a user then which we will create very soon then we can do return await prisma prisma so prisma is coming from the connector that we created in the uh, previous video prisma dot user dot create then we can open this up and the data will be um name data dot name 
dot name so let's create this i'll create another let's call it out dot interface but yes i'll create this i user let's export this interface of i user then i'll split my vs code close this so we need the name of uh, string uh, email string um, password of string uh, what else do we have in the user let's check our prisma name email password profile fix and just copy this and close this and paste it here and comment it out so we have a profile string and say it's optional of string like so um, it's blocked do we need this blocked mm, it's verified okay we don't need to discuss so i can import this from the odds we have data we have email equals to data dot email like so um we have password and we have profile fix like so so and i think that's all for this um then we can let's export this guy doing exports at service service or oh, a better way is just to prefix it just to be consistent with this approach we have export class at service so we have the at service created but we don't want to use a plain text password so what we we'll do we have we go into this utils folder and then ash file then we can copy this ash password by doing await password helper coming from the hash dot ash password then we can wrap this like so then let's move to uh Auth controller. Now, Auth controller will maintain the same export class. Call it Auth controller, like so. Then we can bring in our private read only. Let's call it Auth service. Auth service equals to Auth service, like so. Then we need to generate a constructor. Do it manually. I'll do a constructor. Like so. And do this dot. Auth service equals to new. Auth service. Like so. Then we can have our sync. Let's call it creates. Uh, register new user. Register user then takes in request of request and rise of response let's bring it from express i think well, let me close this guy then we can have a function like this then const data equals to From the interface, then we can assign that to our request the body. Like so. So instead of doing a check here, like uh, if data dot email does not exist, so we we'll use joy for this. So let's do check const existing user equals to await this dot. So we have the auth service. And register user here but 
I'll choose the auto service dot find find by email email and pass our data dot email. So we need to create this method. I'll click on this bulb declare method find by email this is guy yeah. So if I click here, we should have find by email here. So make it public, static, async. So we we'll also use Prisma too. Can I turn with Prisma dot user dot and use find unique. Then we'll open this bracket where. Then we'll open this email equals to email but since they are referencing the same thing we can remove this come back here does not have exist on so what do we have here we have await this dot auto service does not exist on auto service do you mean to access static members so let's assess that i can remove this Let's do auto service dot find by email and this we can equally remove this like so. So if not existing user, existing user, what we do? We can throw new. Let's check our exceptions class that we have um exception. What do we have here? Forbidding. Let's do not a uh, conflict. Conflict. We can import and it's expecting one message. Or let's do it if already exists. We can do user with the email. So do string interpolation. Do user exist dot email already exist like so and if not let's create save user save user call await but service dot create a new user then we can pass in our data like so and if all is well we want to return our response here. So we want to return our response. Response. But let's uh, have a success response class so that we can return a unified response. So I'll come here. You can just create a new folder called DTO or our responses. Let's use DTO. So we call this success response. Responses. Dot yes. Then we do a export class. Success. Response. Like so. Then we have a member. Members are statuses of. Let's say success. Can I have status code? Not required, but let's put it as number. So we are signing this automatically as sources. Then we have a message as string. Then, of course, we need a constructor for this status code of number and message of type string. Then it turns this response. Uh, no, and message of type string. Then we can say this dot status code equals to just code. Then we can duplicate this guy. This dot message equals message. Like so, I like to have a method that will return and can call that will contain all these things at once. So we can do static create. So the name of method is create takes in 
status code uh, type number message of type string then also have a response type return type of success response then we can do return new success response then we can pass this status code and the message you see the usefulness of this in a minute this class is for responses without data to create another one with data let's create one like this i'll call it export class data response then we use our generic of type t let me move this guy then we can copy this from up copy like so then paste and the data will be of type t so data can be an object can be a list of objects and so on so we can also copy this i'll paste it here then we need one more parameter which is data of type t then we can do this dot data equals to data like so then also we can have its own create that we can call a method out of this class create uh then we have data of type t then this one return data response of type t they return new data response with data so what is missing here um, okay we need a generic to here Mm, message has no initializer okay this is meant to be message except like yeah so we have to response type we have the one with without the data object and the one with data object so let's look at how we can use it here so let's create a data response i'll do const response equals to data response dot create if i do control or command click the create is coming here so this is the essence of this method here create then create we have two three arguments this code will be 201 message will be user created successfully fully and the data will be saved user like so save user so data is referencing the if i go to create is referencing this type t this generic of t here then we can return res dot status response dot status code dot json like so pass our response here so we have return response the status then we are picking this status code here which is a number this guy then introducing within we have our response in this format like so we can further simplify this but we'll not do that now let's just continue with what we have now let's go to the odd route so what I'll do, I'll come to this else, I'll open this um copy entirety, and then come to the other route. I'll remove this, I'll change this um to out route. Then we have a router from Express. We have a out controller from out controller. We can bring this guy in. And this dot supposed to be small letter. This dot out controller equals to out controller like so then in the create we can do something like let's do register then out controller dot register user like so then we can export this then in our index that's 
TS. I'll duplicate this guy and I'll call it API V1 uh, out then I'll duplicate the home route call it the auto route so if you have a template so if you have a template already what you can do is just duplicate your code and you modify them so it's coming from our arts out then you can pick the auto route out dot route like so close this and here we, we call this guy out route like so so I open my terminal clear then let's just run npm run dev to see if everything is fine then we can go into our client folder so let's put this guy outside put it outside source then can create our alt folder alt. then now alt we can create register dot http then you can call it a post request localhost 7002 api v1 dot register like so then we need uh, a content type of application chasing then we need this like so we have email aby at gmail.com we have password aby 134 then we have call it ab code then what else we have profile pick let me just confirm that please profile picture so I'll use e.com so we are having this um, e.com for now but in the future we use Mota and Cloudinary to upload our picture so let's give this a try so we got resource not found not found blah 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 so let's check API v1 auth register let's go to our we have API v1 auth then we have register so this is meant to be a post request so i'll turn into a post request and let's see if our terminal okay it's still up let's give this well on creation which should have message the id name email password profile pics created that and so on and so forth and this just code is 201 if you check the http here let me zoom in a bit you have 201 created here too like so but this response is with data if you don't want if you just want to respond without data let's uh go to uh out controller to start out i'll close this for now uh then comment this guy out i'll just do cons response equals to success response dot create then we want those two one and user created successfully like so then we have response dot i think there's a mistake somewhere response okay response my mistake res response so if i start my server again then we go into this guy we can have um I'll call it mi 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 one two three four call it mi mi mimi and mimi.com then if i shoot this we only have the one without response here so whichever one you want to go with you can use 
the response with data or without data. I can also compress this into one class, but I like to separate my concerns, the, the one without and the one with. So I'll comment this guy out and comment this. I'll go with the one with data. If we come back to our design, we've been able to establish this encryption using bcrypt. Now we want to work on our validation. So how can we validate every request coming into our service? I'll go back to my VS Code. I'll open my JSON. Do I have Joy? The package Joy installed? No. I'll open this. Stop this for now. Clear and okay. Do npm install Joy. And it will come here. We have Joy 70.13.3. So I will close this, close my client, close this, this, and in my utils, let's create a new folder called validation. And um, we can have a validate.ts so that we can configure the joy configuration. Then I'll have the class of validator or validate. Then we can do a static validate static method called validate then takes in schema of any then we're gonna have a return type of request from express request from express objects like so then now have a response response from express, then next from next function, next function, then we have a flat arrow head, then this. Okay. Then we can have a structured error because of schema. Schema will be coming in from joy dot so it's referencing this schema here. Schema dot validate. Validate request.body so we want to validate every request coming into our application then let's undo this error if error then we can return rest.status then 422.json then this status is error then message can be something like error dot details split by zero dot message expected okay, let's close this now if we leave it like this our now message if you come in this format uh let me do so you use something like something if you have a double slash or a slash something is wrong in that format so we want to remove that using in rejects, but I would keep this here so that I'll show you. So I'll keep this here and I will duplicate another one. And we'll look at how we can split it. So we can have dot replace. So we want to replace uh, the, the first slash using a rejects. Like so. Uh, this plus iPhone G. Then like so. So when we are testing, I would expose this and this. So I have my export class default, export class validator, like so. Then we need to create schema. I create another file called schema.ts so we can have individual schema for for the validation that we want to write. So let's call this const register user schema user schema. So equals to joy dot object. Then we can do this. So what do we need? We need name joy dot string, and it's required. So I'll duplicate this number of time. I'll call this password. I'll call this email. And for the email, it's gonna be of type string, but it's gonna be of an email. Like so, it's 
So, uh, this is supposed to be email. Let me stick that email dot email should be bracket. Then this should be of is anything like password? Enjoy. I'm not sure. Does not exist. Okay, let me just remove this. Then you can also pass the, the length symbol. Let's keep it simple for now. Then one more thing we need the profile pics. The profile pics is not required. Profile pics. So I remove this required an email. Like so. Then we can export because I'll be having for for login here. Let me just duplicate that now. Call it login user schema. So we need just the password, password, and email. So we can export in this format user schema, uh, register schema, and login schema for login. Cool. So let's go back to our uh, odds browse. I'll close this and come back here. Uh, close this then. So before calling, before hitting the auth controller, we need to validate. So I'll put my validator here. Validator class dot validate. So which schema do you want to use? You want to use the register. Uh, register. What did we call it? Register user schema. Come here and I'll paste here and I'll import like so. Then we can. So, when we have a request from Postman, if we hit register first, then go into the validation uh, config before coming to the auth controller. So, let's give it a try again. I'll start my server. I'll go to my register client. I'll call it Dave, but I'll remove this. So, let's give it a try. So we have error name is required. Like so. Then if I don't pass password, let's see what we have again. So same name is required. Let's pass name. Name equals to Dave at Dave. Okay. Dave, if I click again, we have password is required. Password is required. Dave one two three four. So if I pass password, but if I modify this Gmail, just pass Dave. Let's see, email must be a valid email. It means it's working. If I pass my password, then it's calling the server. Let's give it some time. I don't know why it's keeps rolling. Let me let me check. Let me start the server. Um nope. I'll play. I'll do npm run dev. So let's see again. Let's give you a try again. So let's pass the profile pics. Profile pick. I do d.com. Keeps rolling. Let me check. Is there something? Um, validate. Validate. Let's check this guy. Validate. If error. Oh, do we need to call the next function? I think so. Uh, next. So let's try again. So it's angry because we did not call the next function. Try again, then I'll click. Yeah, so we have user, Dave, and so on. So this is how we can implement our validation. 
So I'll go back to my validate. Now I said I was going to show you what this is doing. So I'll comment this guy out and just pick the message out of the error details. So let's um let's log console log. Let's log our uh, error dot details. Let's see. So I'll open this. I'll call it Jude. Copy, paste, and paste. But I'll remove this. And if I give it a try, so this is what we are removing within rejects the first last year. So that is why we need to remove it. So we have this rejects to replace whatever we are having all these slashes with with an empty string like so. Then if I check my terminal, oh, we have password is required. Blah blah blah. Okay, I think I'm not sure we need this. Let me just comment it out. I'll remove it. Then I'll comment this and remove this. Then if I try again, we have a properly formatted error message. So we are using the return rest status for error messages. Let's have a structured error message too. Let's not use this format like we wrote for this response. So I'll come here. I'll put my export, my DTU class, class, call it a response, like so. so it's going to be in this format to uh, status. So let me copy and dump here. In our case, it will be error or field. Then just code message that can have a constructor, like so. Copy from here. Paste, then also start to create. You can also copy from here too. Just copy um, and paste here. Like so. So we have our success response, data response, and our response. So I'll pick this. Just like we had in our controller, I'll pick this kind of response. I'll come here to validate. Let me paste here, then comment it out. Then instead of this, comment this. We can have const response equals to error response dot create. I'll create then we can have our four to two. Then do we have a message? Yes. Message should be this. You can copy and paste like so. Then we can just do return response. A good, yes. So let's give it a whirl. I'll uh, open my terminal to check if my server is still running. Then I'll come back to my register here and I'll try it here. So we have so that is success. No password is required. Let's check again. Uh, so check again. We have this response. Um, I think there's a mistake somewhere. Response, we have error response. So it's called number string. Mm -hmm. Oh, that this is a mistake. So I have success instead of error response. Yeah, you're good now. And if I try it again, we have error 42 password is required. Cool. 
So we are done with our validation. So let's move over to our file upload. Let's upload our files. I'll close this, close this, close this. Now come here, close this. In our utils, we can also call this guy shared. So let's call it file. Create a new folder called file handler. Then call this multi.ts. Then we also need cloud dinary.ts. Oh, let's just simplify it. Let's call it file upload. File upload. So we can reduce the number of files that we have in our projects. Then we can do um, imports. Motor from motor. Then we need cloudinary, cloudinary from cloudinary, like so. Then we need, could not find declaration. That's correct. npm install fd our types. We need motor. So we need to install the, the types. And the error should be gone. Yeah. So let's do imports cloudinary storage storage from motor storage cloud cloudinary. Do we have this? No. Let's install npm install this cloudinary storage mm -hmm. so let's downgrade it to 2 uh, upgrade to 2.5 so we have a clash we have 4.0 so let's downgrade by coming here Cardinary, let's, uh, let's upgrade this. Let's try this. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Pick, let's pick, comment it out. Um, no. So let's look for, or oh, come here, paste it here, npm. npm install but not install so let's let me put um at 4.0 Point zero point zero still not going now. Uh, what can we do? Mm -hmm. So let me downgrade this for now. Let's downgrade one point four one point. Let's use this. Let's see if okay. I think this um motor dot storage motor storage container is somewhat outdated. But when I downgraded this to 1.4.3, I think it went through. So let's continue with our code. I'll close this and comment this. It should be fine. So let's um, do cloudinary dot v2 version 2 dot, dot config. Then we can do place our configurations here. We have our cloud name. Cloud then con storage. I'm very sure that there are other implementations apart from this. If you want to use this motor storage from there, you can just read upon it. So we're gonna have new cloud storage then Cloudinary, also cloud. Dot v2. Excel. So we are making use of this motor storage cloudinary. So it's the combination of motor and cloudinary. 
then const should call it parser const parser equals to motor now we're using motor can pass the storage here so we can export const single single upload we now use the parser dot single you know in the in motor let's look for motor here motor Motor is a file uploader library or, or package, so we can either use upload or single or for multiple files, we can use upload.array. Single, then the name of our file will be image. So we call this for the array, we can pass a limit of 10 there, then this will be array. So I'll call this multiple multiple upload like so. Then in your dot env, you need to have a provision for that. I remove this, remove this, remove this. Like so so you can um, you can place your keys. And you can narrow them here. So let's use this single upload. So we we'll upload image while we are creating a new user. So I'll come to my auto controller. Come here. Single upload like so. Then before saving to our request, we want to const request const file equals to request dot file. So we have a file because we because of file. Let's just uh, log for now. Let's log this file for now, and I'll start my app again, and I'll go back to my Postman, and I have name is required. Okay, let's go to our out route. Let's bring in a single upload. This is coming from the motor configuration and the cloudinary configuration. Then. Um, then if you go to your require let's do this if file then you can do data dot profile picks equals to uh, file or parts then let's log the file or parts like so uh, else you can just do a return uh, let's do just okay, so we handle that data. So let's try again. Cloud name is disabled. So so this is coming from Cardinary because uh, we need to pass our credentials. So I'll go up my .env. And I'll paste my credentials here. So this is my credentials for Cloudinary. And I'll go back to our code. Let me remove this breakpoint for now. And I'll fire again. Let's see what we have. So it will deploy to cloud name is disabled. Let's see if we got it right. Cloudinary.cloud. Um, dot env env dot config so we have this now so the issue we're facing is this uh for a funny reason is not picking the dot env from from the r dot env so when I fire again, 
it will pick the image and convert it to our profile pic picture. So let's uh, go through the whole process again. Then we can see the HTTP REST clonage.com. This is the image here that we have here. So we have um, file.request.file. File equals request.file. That is, we pick the file from this file name here and we call it image. If you go back to file upload, we will see the name of our file is called image here. Then we said if file is present, data dot profile picks equals to this. And if not present, we can just undo the error. Or we can negate it if file is not pre present. Let's do early return. Uh, else. Then we can have our error handler here. Let's do true new uh, what should we true bad request uh, let's true bad request bad request bad request can do please enter a file so let's try this again we we'll remove the file name so we got user with email julio already exists which is correct but why are we not getting it inside our postman so we forgot to do the next next of next function next function so we need to pass the arrow down then we can wrap this guy into uh, this and can have a catch put the arrow here then we can do next next the arrow so if I send again, which you have user with email, delio, blah, 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 and then we have this stack trace here. Because if you check, go back to our global error handler, we have return rest status code, blah, 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 here. If in development, we are returning this stack trace, but if not, if you are in uh, production, we are passing in null here. That's why we're getting this complete with user. So uh, I'll try to use another name. I'll do user three. Call his name. Call him user three two. So let's check the image again. So we are please enter a file or let's give it a good. Give it uh, format is PNG or JPEG like so. So if I run again, we have please enter a file format is PNG. So then if I activate this guy, send it's gonna send to Cardinary. Like so. To avoid this try catch duplicates in every of our handlers, we can remove this and we'll create a I order function for it. We can remove this too, like so. So what we'll do is I'll come to my shared folder or my utils. I'll create hof for iada function .ts. Then I can call it my async async. Can I spell async async handler? Yeah, we equals to we can pass in a function. I can call it fn. Uh, let's use controller. Controller, we have our arrow function that we can return. So we can wrap everything here. A sync call request of type request coming from the express. The rest of response again from express. Then we can use our next. What do we have to here? Next function from 
next function like so let's use our function again then we can have our try catch here so instead of having it everywhere you can have it in a single place then we can next the error here so we have next error like so then we can do await controller then we can pass in our request response and next function like so so this is uh this will make our code way more clean and we can remove every try catch on at the controller level or if you want to use a class based approach i'll comment this out and i'll do export class call this guy async handler and then you can do a public static give it a method call undo then we pass fn for function or controller and pass it a function and this can be a function too by the way function then we can open this up then we can return request I copy it from here request like so then we open it up then we can do a promise as simple as promise promise then resolve and pass our function here then also request response next then catch next so either ways you can use this or you can use this approach but for class base i recommend this you can also uh change this to try catch too if you wish so i can pick this and i'll go to my handler to my user route before calling our controller layer we can wrap this here so i'll paste the handler here dot undo do you call it handler or handle so it's okay handle dot undo then we can wrap this here and we should still have the same effect so if i go back to my postman i'll comment this guy out so we still have error 409 so we've been able to strip uh, the try catch away from the registered user controller yeah like so 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 far we've done validation machine uh file upload um deploying to roku using a bash script we've done global error handling so let's do our access and refresh token now so um let's go to our auth then we can write async do login since we have a template now it's very fast then we can pick this guy up so i will dump it here login your user then i'll close this so we need let me duplicate this guy Login. You can use type two and you do a chain in here, like something like um, type user request Java one. Then you can now do a chain in like this to hold another type. But let's just stick to this interface. So for this, I'll remove the picture, I'll remove name, I'll pick this guy up and I'll dump here. Should be of this. Then we can copy this. Existing user, let's call the user exist. So if user does not exist, you can throw a new not found not found exception uh, so user with the email so we have user exist if user does not exist we are trained this error then let's check 
const uh, password matches password matches uh, equals to uh, wait mm -hmm. password helper dot compare compare this is meant to be compare compare then we can change this guy then we can put our password our data dot password against the user exist dot password like so and if not a password match so let's write good English if password doesn't match then we can throw new bad request and just pass invalid credentials and if not let's um create a service for this token So I'll come here, I'll go back to my helper file, create generbeauty.ts, then do export class GWT service, GWT service, service, then can do private secret, it's going to be a string. So our script will be coming from .env. Then we need a constructor. Then on boot up, this .secret should be equal to process .env .jwt .secret. Uh, underscore secret. Then. For signing our secret, just do create a new file. We create a new method called sign. We pass parameter payload. It can be of object. Like so. It can be a record, can be an object. Then we can do return. GWT.sign. Should come from. Let's import it. Import. GWT GWT from JSON we're talking like so then dot sign you can have a payload then this dot secret like so we can duplicate this guy we can have um, verify verify so this is going to be verify it's going to be token. You can change this guy to token, then it should be of type string. Token against the secret. As simple as this, then we can bring this here. You can do const token equals to, I think we need it to service JWT. service dot sign do we have this here okay that's sign type of okay let's bind this service to out controller there are several ways to bind it uh, we can use this dots this keyword so let's bring it in here i'll do um, private read only gwt service service equals to gwt service like so then in our constructor now on boot of this dots equals to a new instance of the British service like so so we can use this dot sign so it's picking it up now and by the way you can use it for this hot service too but let's continue uh, we have um sign what do we have here let's create payload 
be equal to number of ID as user exist dot ID. Uh, if you want your email, user exist dot email. But you want to be as as discreet as possible. You don't want to share too many information, too much information to your clients. So let's just remove this for now. Then passing our payload like so. Then we can return. Let's return. Um, what do we need to return? Let's just copy from here our response. We can pass in our token like so. User logged, login successfully. Give it to 200. Can, can remove this like so. Then, if I go back to my auto route, we can equally duplicate this. Okay, this we call it login. We remove, we don't need this. Validate. We pick the login user schema. So this is the beauty of having a template so that you can just move codes around user schema. Then we bring it in. Then auto dot login user like so. As simple as that. So let's test our code. I'll come back here to my client. Now control C, control V. Name the guy to login. So we need the password of this user. What was the password? I can't really remember. Um, so let's create a new user. Okay, let's pick this user three and the password. And the password is password one two three. I'll paste here, then I'll shoot. Uh, can we close this? So what do we have? We have name is required. So let's check our uh, validate. Now our schema. Uh, da, 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 da. Login is our schema. Okay, so that is correct. Uh, oh, this is sign in. So it's supposed to be login. My mistake. Let's just confirm that login. So if I send, we have user with the email Jude at Gmail not found. It's correct. Then we can paste the correct email here. Correct email here and the password here. Wait, am I using the right? Okay. So this login, then if I send, what do we have? Cannot read property of one find reading java service, UW2 service. So let's check our binding very well. So this is where tools like this is where framework like Nestjs shines because they have this dependency injection which we are going to look at in the future. Managing dependency injection here using raw TypeScript can be problematic. This is where to framework like Nest.js or Spring Boot shines. In other words, uh, let's look for a way to bind this. I we can create a bind bind all method. So I call it bind all methods. Then we pass this. This is referring to the current object. Then we we'll create it. So we we'll go to our upper functions. Then we can call it bind methods dot ts. So function bind methods.
So this is a utility function that um, automatically binds all method to object instance. I saw this um, this online and it's, it's it's very good. So if you go through the code line by line, it's taking an instance as a parameter, then method get on property names returns the name of the own properties of an object. From here to this code line here, it retrieves an array of all methods. So it retrieves an array of all methods and properties directly available on prototype of the instance. And we are doing a, a loop on it to get the constructor. So this is a utility function in TypeScript that automatically binds all methods to object instance. So we don't have to have the this keyword everywhere in our controller. There you are. So let's try again. Let's give it a try. So as you can see, we got another because secret key must have a value because we're not passing secret key. So I'll change my secret key. Now come here. Now paste. Let us give it a random for now. Then let's try it again. I'll try to click on login. Uh, did we restart? Uh, let's restart. Yeah. So we have this data. And if you check, if you copy this and go to gwt.io. I'll paste here, we can have our ID of five years. So we are sending minimal data back to the to the clients, uh, but we are missing a very important key called expires, expires in. So I'll go back to my art, EWT, then we can pass, we can pass the option as expires in. Let us do one day, like so. So if I come back, go back to my login and I refresh, then if I copy this, so we should have the expires in here. So if you run it, you have Thursday, September 19, then expires in Friday, September 20. Makes sense. So I'll come to my gwt.ts. Let's have for a refresh token. So we can call this sign refresh token first token uh, I really you can copy this and I'll paste it here sign fresh token so we can also so let's rename it to access this one will be refresh wt Secrets. Like so, then let's um since we change the name here, let's come back to our out controller and we can do sign access token like so. Then we also need const, so we change this guy to access token. We can bring this one here, call it refresh token. Refresh token. Then we do this dot deputy service dot sign fresh token. Then pass our payload to. So, so this is why I'm having this payload here. Then we can have an object here, access token. And refresh token. So let's try this. I will start my server again. Run dev. Go back to my login. Then I'll show this guy. So we need a secret for that too. Okay. Go to my EMV and change it to. Uh, so what did we call it? Access token and refresh token. Dot EMV. EN, ENV I will put this guy I'll alter this so I'll call this guy refresh 
then we will load our server by typing rs come to the login client then we fire this guy so we have these two token we have the access token and refresh token makes sense so we are done with access token refresh token now let's see how we can put it around let's do a me endpoint or a profile endpoint but before that let's create our middleware um let's create our middleware so i'll come here in the source which is the root folder i'll call it middle yes so let's uh have alt.ts so i'll create a class export class call it alt then we do private not protected private read only gw service that we used earlier then we call it gwt service then we need a constructor constructor then you can do this dot service equals to a new instance of gwt service you can write um so let's create authenticate method authenticate uh so we pass the request of type request from express response of type response also from express and next from type next function then you can do const token equals to request get it from the request dot headers dot authorization excellent so if not token we can true if not token true unauthorized it's supposed to be new true new unauthorized then we pass a message as unauthorized right so let's get the token from the bearer it will come in this format bearer token so we need to split it by this space and get the index of one so let's split this guy by cons split token token equals to token token the split then when to split by space then you can get the index of one and if not split token token you can show the same error like so and let's get our decoded token decoded let me space this decoded equals to this dot debit service dot verify access token then we can pass in a, a splitted token splitted token can replace this with token again if not decoded control the same error and um, if decoded you can pass our user create a new user object called user then you can pass decoded now it's saying property user does not exist on request params blah blah, blah. so let's fix that before we fix that let's do next and it's a group party that you wrap this in a try catch so I'll surround this with try catch surround with try catch like so so we can return something here Error. So we handle this one later, but let's fix this request.user. So to fix this, uh you open let's create another file called 
and that folder called types types then we call it express dot c dot ts in lieu of this you can use loader to pick up the request but i feel that this approach is is very simple to use so we import express from express to declare Gluba we have namespace express an interface called request then user can be of type uh, can use either use any or you use um, GWT so let's create GWT payload like so then the second thing to do is to include it in your TS config then let's include the files the files you want to include source then go to types then go to TS I believe the type string is not as able to type okay let's fix that So, you can use string or GWT payload from this web token. So, let's bind this method to this constructor. So, another way, instead of calling that bind all that we created earlier, so another way to bind is to do it manually by doing this dot authenticate equals to this dot authenticate dot bind, like so. Then you can pass this current object here or if you don't want to use this approach you can use this utility function that we created earlier this um, bind method here that we use okay so our app is still running so let's go back to our controller so I'll call this async me uh, let me just copy from here copy and paste here then we close then we call this me so we can have um const id equals to request dot user dot id then um, we can just use this find by id so we don't have that so i'll pass the id here uh, find by ID then we can do um, user exist or oh, user with this ID with the ID does not exist so we need to create this I'll declare a static method and um, public and do return await prisma not prisma dot find dot user dot find uh, you find unique where ID equals to this the way ID should be number so told this guy to asynchronous operation uh, pass number like so so if user we can return a response so return a response 200 user profile found then let's return instead of this we can return user exist like so then we can go to our out control out route then we can bring this in call it me endpoint and get endpoint we don't have to validate then we can call me 
but before we do that we need to pass our odd middleware here so how can we use our odd middleware let's bind it to mm. so we can use our bind method here just to make things simple i'll come to Bind this, then I'll go to my bind this. Then can bring in our private out middle middle subtype out. Can bring this guy in like so. So we can do this dot out middleware equals to new out by the way we can rename this to out middleware. What do we have here? Got to out middleware. Let's read them into out middleware. Pick this come here out middleware so that we can have the same naming. Can remove this out like so. Then we can call or can do this dot auto middleware dot authenticate like so. So let's test our me endpoint again. Let's use postman for this. I'll clear this. Then we have. The endpoint here. If I remove the odds, so what's the issue? Let's go back to our odds. Let's check. So let's just call the next error. I guess there's an error there. So let's next it. So we're gonna start and fire again. Okay, this is unauthorized error. So it's so we have this unauthorized error. Then we need to pass in our token. Pair token. Uh, let me just create another one here. Login. So it'll be a post request. HTTP. Let's call it login. Login. You can pick this. Pick this. Then in our form body, I'll dump this here. Then I'll send and pick my access token. Then I'll come to this should be the me. And I'll paste it here. And we got QWT malformed. So we are we got this E. If we go back to my odds, let's check. We have split token, so we need to put the space here because without the space, it will just pick the first E. So, split by space. Then we have our user here, we have user ID of five, and so on and so forth. And we have token being logged there, so I'll remove this token here. The next to do is to create our logger. If you go back to our design, we have this uh, production logs. So let's fix that. So I'll come here. Let's see if we have Winston installed. Winston. So let's install that. npm install Winston. Winston. It's gonna be a simple configuration then i'll come back to let's close this client prisma and call it logger let's call it logger.es then let's bring in our winston so i do import uh winston from no from winston terminate string that's true so we need to import the format too 
you can import formats so this is the formatter like so then let's declare this so we need to declare the, uh, the kind of format that we want we need to, um we need to config here yeah, combine timestamp uh, label print and color if you want color uh, equals to format so we are destructuring from this format that we installed am i missing something colorizer yeah colorize so they are all coming from this format if you control click you see this colorize you see label you see print f so they are all coming from this format then we can have our own format equals to print f print f then we're gonna have our label message label label is here and time is time like so then let's return this timestamp um can now this label level and uh, let's do this mm -hmm. message so this is how we want to format our equipment of the timestamp the label the level and the message like so let's create logger const the actual logger equals to using winston dot create logger so this is a method attached to winston then we can pass our format no our format here so we can combine it colorize label we equals to so you can give it a label like um login let's give it a label login pro then the timestamp will come from the timestamp then our format argument of time format is not automated for my format did we miss anything here timestamp okay we need to invoke it then we can have transport if you want to have your file logged in your current folder you can just use this transport so for transport uh have a um, new winston for transports dot file so we can create the name of our file here the file name will be inside our logs so we create a new folder called logs error dot log and the error level error level will be error like so then we can get this guy if you want the error level of combine you can just remove this level here so we call this guy combined then we can export default logger so i don't want to write this uh in oop because it will be an overkill so it's just a simple logger then we can go to our index on boot up let's go to our app or server instead of this i'll change this to logger also let's do ctrl d logger.info uh, let's bring this in do we have info yeah so let's see the difference so let's see this logger in action i'll do npm run dev 
clear my screen and run. Then if you check your logs folder, you see all the logs here, the error here. We don't have any error at the moment. But if you check the logs, we have it running here. Also, we want to log it to, to our console. So let's see how we can do that. So to, to be able to log to console, we need to call the new. So if I call the new Winston dot transport dot console. So we can enable that using this. Then we invoke. Then we see our logs here. So this is the format we have. The timestamp here. This is the timestamp. The label login pro. So yeah, login pro. Let's use an emoji like so. So we have this login pro. Then because the level is info level and the message is this so this is a production grade logger then we can in our git ignore we can pass the logs folder here that we don't know we don't want to push it to our github then anywhere that we have console log let's check console the log in our out controller we we don't need this and let's check again seed we can replace it with logger dot info like so uh what else do we need i think that's all so the next thing is to do a fire and forget we want to use this concept to send email to our newly created users so i'll come here in my utils, I'll create another one called uh, emitter.ts.ts dot ts. like so. Okay, we're gonna have a new class emitter extends event emitter. From, not from streams from uh, events so uh, we don't need this so we can have a private read only uh, we can either use a link or a token let's use a link I'll do front end URL a string a constructor then you can pass front end front end pick this paste here because of string then you can do this dot front end uh, equals to front end URL like so Constructor for derived class must contain a super class. So let's see if we can, we can fix that as super core, like so. Then private async. Then we can want to send a send welcome email. Welcome email. Then we have a data of object of email. In a string, a name of string like so so const mail content will be a wait so we'll create a template for this we'll do welcome uh, user temp dot generate welcome email then this temp can pass in a data dot email and data dot name like so we we'll create this soon i'm gonna have a send email so we use node meter to send email you can pass this then email we data dot email and subjects subjects will be welcome to 
service message will be email content so this guy here this dot send no this should be send email we create this too in a bit then we can have our front end URL let's put it here cons front and URL should be equals to process dot env dot uh, call it front end URL again This is maybe a string. Mm, mm, mm. Then after this, let's um const emitter or can call it email emitter equals to new emitter. Let's call this email emitter just to save emitter, then we can pass our front end. You are like so. So let's create this our email sender. We can just call this email sender dot yes, or you can create a new folder for it and call it mail. Then we can move our email sender here. So let's import npm install node miller clear. Then you want to configure that. Let's bring in import node Miller and the transport options. Options from node Miller and non word node import. Okay, node Miller declaration. Do we need to install IFND node at types node Miller that should fix it? Yeah, so we can have a type type of transports options type. Then we can have a host. Host is going to be of type string. Port should be of type number. Alt is going to be user of type string and pass of type string. Type string like so. Then TLS check unauthorized on authorized two billion. Then you can have our email options to here interface of email options. Then we have email of string. Uh, let's duplicate this one time, two more times. We have subject, subject of type string and message of type string. So they can send mail, send email that we created earlier here. It's gonna be as a sync. Then we can pass the options as this email options here. As you can see, it's activated already. Then we can call this const transporter transporter equals to node miller dot create create trans no create transport this guy then we open this up host is gonna be process dot env dot sm 
http underscore host as string will be a comma need port to smtp port uh, we can convert it to number it's going to be a number and for the odds pass user and make copy this and we call it SNTP user and for the password we get this call this pass SMTP pass do we need to rewrite this guy again okay the options here okay uh, pick this comma and paste here. Uh, what do we have this here? TLS uh, should be false. Yes, we need it because here yeah, we're just declaring the type here, but we are passing the actual value as false here. So we can give it as uh, this type type of transport options type. This type here. So if I remove this here, not activated, but if I go back here, activated. So we're using this type here. So we need to wrap it in a try catch. Then we can do const message equals to from let's do use our string interpolation from um, process process dot env dot from name then we're gonna have this uh, process dot env dot smtp so this is options So this is our send email configuration. Then if I close this, close this, close, let's close uh, almost everything. Then let's go back to our emitter, emitter. So let's bring this guy in. So the last thing that we need to do here is to put our templates. So I'll come to my utils. I'll create another one called, um, another folder called templates. And I'll create a welcome template dot yes and I have this code already written here. So we have a class of email template, then we have a front end URL constructor, then generate this is the method generate welcome email template. We pass email and name as parameter. If we go back to our emitter, we have email and name as parameter then then we have this html so it's going to return a promise of string then at the end of the day we have new email templates then we are passing a front end url there so that we can use it today so this is the same name that we have here so i can import this and we are good to go so we need to in our emv.emv .emv, you need to set up your dot env so you need to set up your smtp password so i will set up my host user pass uh, the from name and the SMTP from so let me check again the host I think we need ports like so so you can just populate this uh, according to what you have or let's use mail mail trap then we forgot to export this guy 
uh, I can do default dot email emitter Excel. So to use this, what we'll do is um go back to my user controller. What's controller? Controller. Then after then after saving the user, I can drop this and I'll import from which is emitter like so. Saying cannot find username, then let me bring save user dot email. Then we can use optional chain. Then we have emit. So if you control click here, it's coming from this email emitter. Then it means to pass a fronted URL. Do we have a fronted URL? Or oh, let me just do a fallback of um. HTTP localhost sixty seven six seven six. Let's call it sign up. So before we test, we need to bind this send welcome email to our email emitter class. So I'll put it here. So this dot on welcome mail. Then if you look for the emitter name. So if you go back to to our auth controller, we have welcome email. This is the name here that we are referencing here. Once it points to this welcome email, it will pass it to this send welcome email message here. So let's test on our postman. So I'll put my terminal and I run npm run dev. So I have this register payload here, so we can call it Timo. And Timo, then the password is this. So if I send, so we got this response, but it's actually slow. So the time taken is 9.71 seconds, which is, which is large, which is, um, a whole lot of time. So let's, we got the email. This is the template. Welcome to our service. Hello, Timo. Let's look at what is wrong. Why is it taking which time? So we have our meter. Welcome email. This is the send email. So let's check here. So why taking time? Then we have emitter dot emit welcome here. Oh, okay. It's because we are calling this on I got my out route to create a new user. We are uploading to Cloudinary. So Cloudinary is, is actually taking time to upload that image to Cloudinary because before so So the reason for this time is because we are uploading to Cloudinary first. If you notice, when we hit our route, we hit the single upload function first. This we upload to Cloudinary. If I click on this parser, it's coming to motor then, and the storage is picking Cloudinary here. So this is actually blocking the thread and not releasing it. This upload to Cloudinary. We'll find let's do pick a to do uh we're gonna optimize it by using uh can use clusters or or child process in the future. So this is uh how we can use emitter to send email here. So let's see if we are not sending to Cloudinary first. So I'll comment this for a moment and um, I'll go to my auto route. Let's see how fast that will be. Then I'll comment this guy out. Then, then instead of using this um this form data because we don't send in any image for now, let me revert back to raw JSON. And I'll do name equals to. Puma 
comma email equals to uh, email equals to comma at gmail.com then password equals to this so you can see how fast we got the response to one seven milliseconds then if we check our mail trap we still got the email we got hello puma get started and and so on this is how we can send email in the background using this events emitter uh, i will uncomment this come back to my register user comment this for now we'll look for a way to optimize this in the future so that it will not take too many time to upload to cloudinary so if you come to our design we've been able to achieve validation hashing fire and forget fire upload and how we can push to to iroku using bash scripting uh, we also looked at how we can do a production log using wasting we created access and refresh token and global error handling this video is long already so i'll not be able to implement the pagination and calling external rest api and also how to revoke our token so i'll leave a link to this project in the comment section so that you can clone this code and you can implement pagination external rest api caller and how you can revoke your token